You are listening to a Higher Things production. Higher Things is a 501c3 nonprofit organization whose mission is to make the gifts of Christ Jesus known to youth and young adults through gospel rich content like you are about to hear. Consider joining our supporters who make this ministry possible by donating at higherthings.org slash giving or by clicking the link in the show notes. And now, Higher Things presents The Uncultured Saints with Pastors Eli Leedsow and Harrison Goodman. Sure. What are we talking about? They're tired of hearing us. uh, I'm tired of hearing us. What? uh, We are on Mark chapter one still. Mm -hmm. Uh, Yeah. Um, We can't get anything done, can we? No, that's okay. And I think we're just on the temptation, but I think we can get further today, maybe. Hmm. Hypothetically. Um, Last time, I think what we did was uh, we read all of what we were going to do, and then we went back, and maybe that's not the best. Uh, um, it's ambitious. We... It's right. ambitious. So maybe let's just go uh, portion by portion, because you kept wanting to jump ahead straight to the temptation. You we wanted to, get... to like you read it. sprint through this, um, and maybe that's not the best way to go. You know, sprinting Sorry. through our Lord's Word and all. I don't have Beats by Dre headphones. I can sprint. That's true. Fall. <laughs> read the Bible. All right. So last time we did Never mind. Uh, we'll uh, read the Bible. Mark chapter one. Uh, and we got all the way to uh, verse 11 and we did the baptism of Jesus. And then you wanted to jump right into the temptation. We didn't get there. So uh, I'll read the temptation and you say whatever you wanted to say about it. All right. So the spirit immediately drove him, being Jesus, out into the wilderness. And he was in the wilderness 40 days, being tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild animals, and the angels were ministering to him. All right. What you got? Anything? There's nothing to talk about here, because all of the temptation stuff is in the other Gospels. Um I, I love sort of the the forcefulness that we're sort of moving through this. And it's, I, I got to believe intentional. Um, it, it's not just me who's eager to sort of move along with the story. It's, it's the evangelist. Uh, there, there's not only sort of the, the immediately, which is um, going to show up a little bit here as yeah. we get going, but uh, it, it, it's sort of the idea that um, this, this seems like it would be sort of something to talk about. Uh, he, he was tempted by Satan. Now as a thing, next Next thing, we're, we're yeah. just going to immediately move past it. Um, I, I love the first chapter of Mark because it kind of puts things in perspective because it takes all the things that we want to make a huge deal about and it downplays them incredibly. And it takes all the things that we, we try to gloss right over and it's the thing that we have to keep sort of being confronted with. Yeah, and I I think I think with Mark, um, again, there's probably a number of different reasons um, uh, uh, the spirit uh, leading him to do all this, but... Uh, a if if Luke and Matthew have already gone over this, um, then good. Luke and Matthew's already gone over it, and the hearers probably have heard it. Okay, good. But also, I think there's a couple other things too. Uh, uh, I think he's he's showing Christ's uh, humanity here uh, in, in a certain way, as if because when I was a kid, just learning about the temptation of Jesus, I only thought that he was tempted those three times. Mm-hmm. Right, that was it. And he right. just had he just had to pass that test, and then and then he was he was fine. But we hear elsewhere in Scripture that that Jesus was tempted in every way like us, except without sin. And I don't know about you, but I've been tempted more than three times, right? Uh, so I think this is uh, one way to kind of see that no, this temptation, it's going to be if he's truly human, mm-hmm. then this temptation's going to be there. It's going to be there throughout his whole life in, in one form or fashion or another. Um, and it, it pops up really well in the Garden of Gethsemane as well, I think, right? And and, and I'm going to say all of uh, the temptations of, of Satan, not all of them, but I, I think a lot of them are, are trying to keep Jesus from the cross in one way or another. Um, but another thing that I thought was kind of neat here is, uh, well, two other things. Um uh, the way that the spirit uh, uh, drives him out into the wilderness here, as opposed to leads him, right? In Matthew yeah, he's, and he's Luke, forced. right? In Matthew and Luke, it's like, oh, hey, come on, let's go into the wilderness. Let's, yeah, Follow the spirit me. walks with Jesus and talks with Jesus, right. and, and and here he just sort of boots him out and skull drags right. him. Right, he drives him like the like yeah. the uh, 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 the uh, scapegoat on the Day of Atonement. 
Ooh. He's got the, the sins of the world placed upon him after his baptism, just drives him out there into the wilderness, right? Mm-hmm. I think there's so many different things that are going on at the same time here. It's the scapegoat stuff. It's the Jesus is Israel reduced to one. So he is uh, standing there, uh, 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 not succumbing to temptation like Israel did in their 40 years. I mean, there's just so much in these small little verses that we're seeing. And then the last thing that I want to talk about is Mark's the only one who talked about wild animals, too. And what's that all about? I would sort of play with it in terms of like when we talk about sort of the the outer places uh, where there are no control, where there are, there are dark and and enemy things. Um, what we have is a, a Jesus confronting the fallenness of all of creation along with it. Uh, the the wild animals are are things that are, are promised to actually be tamed in Isaiah in the new creation. Uh, that um, we have in the fall, we we have Adam and Eve then have to be warned: don't go near certain animals, uh, don't try and eat that because they will eat you. Uh, there it shows that that Jesus is sort of not only confronting sort of like that the list of ten commandments that we have broken. This is not an arbitrary type of thing, but but rather he is not only contending with with Satan, but even with all the fall of of all of creation. Yeah, I think I I think that's it. And again, in his in his uh, uh, full humanity, after not eating for forty days, uh, he is weak, and uh, you've got to think that the jackals are just surrounding him. Right, the scrawny man wandering around in the desert, who's feeble. Uh, yeah, I think uh, I think maybe the angels are going to have to protect him a little bit. It's this word minister too, because minister, um, it's a word that we recognize from church service because like you're a minister and I'm a minister and, yeah. and we sort of want to tend to reduce it to, uh, to the preaching office, but minister just means serving. Right. And so in some vocations, it means preaching in some vocations, maybe it means, yeah, throwing rocks at jackals so they can't eat our Lord. Um, there, there, there's a lot of things that it could cover. It's um, a good thing. I like that. I, I, I wonder if it's both. Like I actually, I do. I, I wonder if Jesus here is is actually being preached to uh, by the the angelic host. Um, I, I wonder if there is there's actually encouragement to be found there. I bet. I mean, I'm sure he has to. Again, uh, with uh, with Satan tempting him, uh, uh, and then with his own uh, his own flesh, true flesh, who's just dying to get something to eat. Um, and then knowing what's coming for the next three years, there's going to be preaching. There's going to be encouragement. There's going to be psalms sung. I mean, I think there's going to be tons of this out there. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's uh, it's worth noting that that sort of inside of this, then um, the the confrontation with temptation isn't sort of dealt with by will, but by grace. Um, because most of the time when we sort of come across the temptation of Jesus, we'll take it, we'll reduce it to three things. And we'll say, if you memorize the right Bible verses, you can totally outsmart the devil. And you never really have any problems with temptation. All you do is have to read more Bible, um, try harder. And even Jesus, who was God, who did know all of the scriptures, needs to hear of the words and promises of God. Yeah, right. Yeah, I like that. It means then that, that when we when we des- deal with temptation, um, we can actually hear finally actually take something to, to, to go home with. Um, it's not just read more Bible, but it might be hear more preaching. When you are struggling with temptation, hear more preaching. When you are struggling with temptation, do not be alone, but be be near those who will minister to you. Um, by, be it uh, your your pastor or whoever you have to throw rocks at jackals. Um, either either one would be fine. Both yeah. maybe. Oh, that's great. Anything else on these two verses? No, I'm, I'm excited about this next two verses, though. Now, this is uh, picking up at 14. Now, John, after John was arrested, Jesus came into Galilee, proclaiming the gospel of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Uh, this is interesting right away. He sounds just like John. He sounds just like John, uh, but but it's also um, it, it's loaded language after John gets arrested now, um, right? Because it, it's sort of a confrontation with the kingdom that we we are looking for and the kingdom that Jesus is actually actually bringing. Um, if if we're sort of willing to at least be entertained, that uh, the people by and large can pick up on the language that Mark is using. So after John was arrested, uh, we know how that ends. We know he's going to get sort of deheadified before this is all said and done by by an evil ruler. Um, and Jesus is out here saying, actually, the kingdom is here. 
And you can sort of talk about it in terms of like, is Jesus sort of making a, 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 a like a clap back against the idea that uh, his, he would not be in charge? Is Jesus sort of lashing out against Herod? Or is Jesus maybe trying to get us to, to reframe our understanding of what his kingdom is going to look like? I think it's probably both. I mean, mm. the fact that he's out there in Galilee, like you said, right after uh, Herod, who's tetrarch of all of this places, um, ruler of this, um, and John's preaching A, and then Jesus uh, comes back from the wilderness and he preaches A. I mean, it's not like Jesus ever shied away from, you know, preaching the truth to uh, During his crucifixion. During his crucifixion, he would say nothing. Well, okay, that's fair. That's fair. But up to that point, like Pharisees so actually, come, so, he preaches. But this is my point. Like, I'm not, I'm not trying to take away. I'm trying to add to. Right. Um, John the Baptist is preaching for Jesus. Jesus doesn't need to come and preach it. He already preached it. He himself preached it through his prophet. This is, uh, this is he who hears you, hears me. And he who rejects you, rejects me and the one who sent me uh, from the words of our Lord. Um, John the Baptist already preached to Herod. Herod already heard the same sermon. And so this, this isn't sort of like a, now you better listen, or now I'll fix it because you didn't do it right. But, but rather, uh, this is actually still true. But the thing that was spoken to him is true, and it looks like something. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, I like that. No, with the, the whole Yahweh preaches when, uh, when the prophet preaches. Right. And so that means then that, that if, uh, if, if Yahweh is preaching here, the kingdom of God is at hand, repent and believe in the gospel. It, it's, it's a reframing that this is actually how things are supposed to be. Uh, I know that you don't like how things are right now, but we go looking for a power, uh, a kingdom of power and a kingdom of order. Uh, and, and instead, we, we have a, a kingdom of God that, that brings repentance and, and belief in the gospel. That uh, what we, we sort of go go looking for is uh, Jesus to lead forth the uh, the angel army to free John the Baptist, the, the righteous preacher, and, and sort of say, well, since you believed the right things, nothing bad can happen to you now. Now everybody will know that you said the right things all along. But but rather, Jesus is, is saying, Herod heard law and gospel. You are hearing law and gospel. Repent believe in the gospel. And, and this is actually where God establishes his kingdom on earth, not where all the sinners stop sinning and make better choices, not where all the politics of the world finally line up with true and good and right, but but rather where the gospel is proclaimed that sinners would hear it and, and by the power of the Holy Spirit that drives Jesus into the wilderness, believe it. Right. You know, uh, <clears throat> this is just a small little side note that, that uh, just recently it, it kind of knocked me and it, it means nothing i mean not that much but if if mark is is uh, doing things chronologically um mm -hmm. and, and not just plopping things all over the place and it seems like he is uh, uh quickly enough then we've got the baptism of jesus and then immediately the spirit sends him out into the wilderness and then he's out there for 40 days and he makes his way back and it's within those 40 days that john's been arrested mm -hmm. It's, it's within those 40 days that, that he's done enough to make Herod mad. But also think about it this way. It's within those 40 days that he goes out um, and, and, and everything is fulfilled. Like uh, uh, when John says, right, I must uh, decrease so he, Jesus might increase. Like, no, that's happening like that. Hmm. The Savior is there. The, the Messiah is there. It's time to, it's time to roll. And John, he's off. And, and maybe this is even perhaps, and now this might just be conjecture, but maybe this is even perhaps uh, uh, God's way of, of, you know, taking John, not for the sake of John, but for the sake of everybody else, off the table. Like, you can't, you can't go here and, and knock on John's door and ask him to, to keep preaching out there. You know, he's, he's, in a, he's in a dungeon. So now the, yeah. now the only one to listen to is Jesus. And that's exactly yeah. what John wanted to do. It's uh, he. John gets the 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 gift of going to prison oh, because gift. <laughs> his words are never actually going to be then uh, laid against the words of the Lord. And, and it's something that we like to do when we don't like the preacher. We we try and put him against the Lord. Um, the, the prophets are called false prophets, even though they, they cry repent um, over and over again throughout the Old Testament. And, and, and so too today, I mean, you, you see a lot of places where it's just, it's really, really hard to hear some sermons. And it's just sort of easy to believe that God would actually really hate it if you told me all the things that he actually said in his own book. So please don't do that. Um, it, it, it's a hard line to, to sort of deal with. But, but John the Baptist actually in, in mercy 
then gets to start to receive. This yeah. is actually where I think it's it's a gift. I, I don't I'm not super fond of the idea of being all beheadified. Um but yeah. John gets to start to hear preaching. We we know that while he's in in prison, um he 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 sends his uh he sends his disciples out and has them come back with words from the Lord that that sustain him in in a time of doubt and in a time of despair in prison. Right. Um Ultimately, the the thing that that stands, the thing that actually matters, and this is why uh, when we start to measure where the kingdom of God is and where it isn't, we have to look to where people believe. Uh, John John heard the things that he needed to hear, because it, it's easy to sort of say if if the kingdom of God is really here, then the people who really believe it will have good things happen to them. And a sign that John was doing something wrong is that he's in prison. And a sign that Herod's doing something not so wrong is that not the word of God speaks against it, but rather he got away with it and people are fine with it. Uh, Jesus is out here while everything's falling apart, while everything's turning his head. And like, I don't think he got back from the wilderness. Is like, man, I left for 40 days and all of this is <laughs> happening. You guys are terrible. But but rather he goes, no, it's okay. It's time yep. to preach the forgiveness of sins. Th Repentance, this, believe in the gospel. This is how it must be. Right. right. This, this and that, yeah, that, that means that when everything is falling apart for you too, that the, the question of where God's kingdom is, um, is it close? Is it far? Is it at hand? Like right here, it's, it's just simple. Uh, is the gospel being proclaimed? Okay. It's okay. Yeah. And it's Jesus. That's what he wants to do. Look at me. I'm the one pushing us forward now. Racing us through the. So Jesus here at uh, uh, 16, let's see what happens now. So uh, passing alongside the Sea of Galilee, he, Jesus, saw Simon and Andrew, the brother of Simon, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, follow me, and I will make you become fishers of men. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. And going on a little farther, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, who were in their boat mending the nets. And immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired servants and followed him. <sighs> All right, so he's, he's setting up his disciples. He's setting up his disciples so that he can teach them over three years and then 40 days after his resurrection as well, really teach them. Uh, and then the book of Acts comes so that we can hear that preaching when we need to. Uh, I, there's something that I want to say about this, but I, I wanted to kind of leave that open. If you had anything say insightful the, say the thing you want to say, um, I think uh, far too often we hear, and we might've mentioned this in another podcast that nobody listened to, um, but <laughs> nobody heard it. Uh, but I think we All see this, this calling, right? Um, and uh, I know that I've heard sermons or Bible studies, and, and not necessarily uh, good ones, um, uh, saying, see, uh, see what uh, uh, Peter did. See what John and James did. They heard the calling of the Lord and they dropped everything. And you must go do the same. Right? Mm -hmm. eh, mm -hmm. I, I don't like that. Better. Make it better. Uh, <laughs> I don't like that. A, uh, this is, uh, I believe, uh, an apostolic office that we're talking about first yeah. and foremost. So we've got apostles. So this is different. Not that these guys were better, uh, but the office that they're being called into is different than the office that anybody uh, since after what John dies, right? Uh, of natural causes. Uh, I don't think anybody's holding that apostolic office after him. Um, so this is a very specific office, but also I have to say something then, uh, what about Zebedee? <laughs> Did he screw it up? He stays in the boat. Lives in his vocation. Yeah. That's the thing he's supposed to. Uh, exactly. Like I, I, whatever this, whatever this sermon comes up, I preach on St. Zebedee and I, te uh. I tell people to stay in the boat. It's the most beautifully contrarian thing that I've heard from you in minutes. Um, so, but this is actually, I, I'm going to agree with you and it is hard for me um, to, to do this thing. But, but like even the impotence of like, look at the, the good choices that, that James and John made. You also go and make good choices. Um, that's, that's not the faith. You can do that about sinning too. You too have heard the things that the saints have done before. You too make better choices. And if that's the thing your religion stands or falls upon, it woe to me for I am lost for I have not made good choices, nor have I, have I um, 
well, been changed in such a way that I will make good choices tomorrow unless my Lord comes back or I die. Um, but uh, so here's the, the thing then, instead of sort of subjecting this to like, well, here's the consequences of good behavior and here's the consequences of bad behavior. Rather, we can deal with sort of the immediacy of the gospel of Mark. The Holy Spirit drives Jesus out into the wilderness and the angels minister to him. The word of God does something and people are just sort of drug along by it. And in the same way, the word of the Lord that said, let there be light called James and John. Did not call Father Zebedee, right. called James and John and said, you are preachers now. Like there, there, this isn't now there's a time for a decision. It's just, you are light. Now, now it's bright outside, and it, and it was good. Uh, it, it, it's first, yes, it's important to recognize this is an apostolic office, but it's also really good to sort of then um, also deal with, well, we have young men who listen to this podcast, ideally, um, who might be considering one day going into the office of the ministry and then trying to do a much better job than either you or I have ever done, um, because the church needs pretty, it. Pretty but low have bar. you ever gotten that question, like, when, when did you know you were called to be a pastor? Um, yeah, when I, when I realized that uh, I needed a paycheck. Oh, so I, I was called um, to be a pastor, like from a church. Ah, I wasn't right, sure right. up like until that point, like even through seminary, I, I, I was pretty sure I was going to fail any, any point in time. It was, it was dodgy for a hot minute there. Um, even, we, we can tell some story, but we're not gonna. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, you're right. Because uh, we do this, right? We, we, uh, when people ask that question, uh, they're always, they're always asking the, the pastor, like, all right, so what feeling in your gut did you have that you knew that the Lord was was calling you and speaking to you to, to become a pastor? Mm -hmm. None, none, not for me. My pastor told me I had to go. <laughs> um, but like that, this is, this is it though. Um, the call of the church is, is the word of God proclaimed, right. not that I felt it in my heart and made a choice because of it. Um, because like, you've seen it work both ways. Um, like you've seen it where somebody was absolutely convinced church work was the, the right place for them and it did not go well. And, and there right. are people who I, who have made great pastors sense who, who actually it's felt in their hearts, this is a terrible idea. I'm going to go be a truck driver. This is a terrible idea. I'm going to, I'm going to work in a factory. I, I, I'm going to be a professor. And the Lord said, no, it's time now. And when you know you are called, well, that's when the church speaks, when you receive a call. Uh, before that, you, you don't know. This is not sort of like, have you contemplated and felt in your heart the, the inward tug, but rather God speaks, stuff happens. And, and that's how you know when God spoke, because the stuff has happened. Right. And, and, and the problem is, uh, and again, this is kind of uh, uh, where I was getting at, and usually where I get at with most of my sermons on this, is, is we will extrapolate this out, right? To mm -hmm. I, uh, not just uh, uh, church work, but to anything, right? Mm -hmm. I feel, I feel as if God's calling me to move to Oklahoma City or anything like that. And it's, it's just, it's, it's not biblical. It's evil. It's, it's, evil. it's, it's, it's actually, you're... it's of the devil. Um, that Luther goes so far as to say this, if you listen to uh, the last season in the small called articles, he goes, if we try and deal with God apart from his preached and revealed word and sacraments, we're, we're dealing with the devil. Um, your tingly winglies um, are at best case tingly winglies and at worst case, something worse. But, but here's the thing. If you're willing to call them God, but it's not actually God, whatever it is, it's automatically idolatry. Right. Right. And if you have no promise that it's from God, then run away from it and just, or just stay in the boat and keep fishing like Zebedee did. Well, that's just it. And then when you say like, maybe I should move to Oklahoma city, you can do it instead of like this divine command. You can be like, is there a job and a church there for me? If there's not a church and not a job, I probably shouldn't move to Oklahoma City. Would it would it tear apart my vocations that I've been given? I should stay in the boat like Father Zebedee. Yeah. Uh, instead of sort of saying the Lord has, has willed me an airplane and you just haven't bought it for me yet. Um, now you're the sinner. But but rather um, <laughs> what we have is is the divine word speaking and creation molding itself to his words. Uh, it, it also really, really matters when Jesus says something like repent and believe in the gospel, because all of the same impotence uh, that, that was spoken in those words is spoken in these words. And those words are for you, repent and believe in the gospel. And this is not by your own reason or strength, something that you do, but by the power of the Holy Spirit, you are called, gathered, enlightened, sanctified, and kept in the one true faith. Uh, the, the words that God would speak to you happen. Yeah, I like it. Hey, you're the one keeping, uh, keeping track of time. How much, how much more time we got? This is a good place to stop. We'll pick up next time. Oh man, oh, I'm sorry, guys. This is gonna take forever. Yeah. By the time we by the time we do our last one, uh, you're gonna be completely gray.
just the beard, just gray. Be like you're fifty. We. I'll be even more bald. We, like myself, confidence are out. 